So for you festival fashion spotters, this is the look I'll be sporting this year. Meet B, the latest member of the Henson household. A few weeks ago, I don't know if you're aware, I did a twitch where I attempted to write a piece of music in the style of my favourite film composer, Lalo Schifrin. I did a five hour fairly calamitous twitch. I left a composition that uh, had a mix that was less desirable. So it's gonna be a long one today because it's possibly one of the hardest mix I've done in a long time. All for me, mixing is, is just increasing these little 1%. You know, it's quite a lot of effort to get very little difference, just that little 0.5%, 1%. But if you add up 200 little 0.5%, you get something that sounds hopefully 100% better. Right, so let's have a listen to where we ended up after that somewhat calamitous Twitch session. this reeks of like a pungent brie is a very long session tired ears there's levels are all over the place and it's not just levels it's like some things are really dry some things are really wet and it's just a bit calamitous basically so for me mixing it's it's kind of interesting it's it's like you kind of pull your arrangement to bits and then bring it back together again so the first stage will be to go through each instrument and just carve its own place within the mix so this will be when the the individual instruments maybe the samples won't sound as good 
as they did before I started kind of eking them. But it's all about just taking the bits that we want. So there's three things that we can kind of employ here. It's EQ to kind of filter out the bits that we don't need. You'll hear, for example, there's a hi-hat that has a really like low bottom end. We can take that out. It doesn't sound as good without it when it's soloed, but within the context of the piece, it will sound better. We've also got levels, so the actual kind of amplitude. And this isn't a constant. We will shape the mix so everyone has their moment, so to speak. And thirdly, something that's underused, which is pan, is if everything's right in the centre, it can kind of crowd each other out. And using kind of extreme pan can really help in these situations. These recordings, the samples and the live performances, the drums, all been done in different locations. The drums were done at Headley Grange down south. There's some stuff that's been recorded in the HQ at Spitfire, recorded stuff here, all the way to the orchestra recorded at the Air, the big hall at Air Studios. Now this is quite usual for recordings of this type. Mix engineers are having to bring together uh, resources from loads of different environments and that's the thing. It's not necessarily about making everything sound like it's in the same room but it just needs it to have a cohesion. Right, so since we finished the Twitch thing, I've had a bit of a tidy up so you haven't had to watch me kind of title tracks and color uh, regions and basically you'll see there's three different colors and they basically apply to the three different stems we're going to be creating stems which is an abbreviation for stereo master it's kind of little sub mixes basically and I've got three here orchestra drums and band which is keyboards guitars bass that kind of stuff now if I was stemming this out for a proper film score it would be much much broader I'd probably have pianos guitars bass all on separate stems so that they can clear it out with sound effects and dialogue, that kind of stuff. But basically, this is just a mixed decision for me. I want to really slam the drum channel. I want to make it sound like a record as much as I can. I want the band to feel really as one thing. And then I want the orchestra to be treated more gently. It's so easy to over-process orchestral samples and make them sound like synths. So I'll apply slightly different mastering to each stem before applying a more generalised uh, mastering across the whole mix. Uh, it's also a great way of being able to really you know, ride some sections of the band just by riding the stem right at the end. So as always with these kind of mixes I'm going to start with the drums. you can hear that basically all the drums are on the same track. I want to divide them up so I can process each drum individually. And then it's just simply a matter of grabbing everything. We want to basically delete everything but the kick. So select all, find the kick, there we go. So let's start with the kick. Now you notice that I've actually tuned this kit up so it sounds like one of those that kind of tight 1970s. I wonder what it would sound like if we take the kick drum back down. I prefer it up. It's kind of in the same key as the piece. You'll see that I'll use these on pretty much everything. It's the Waves Renaissance. The reason I use them is not necessarily because I think they're the best, but because I've used them for about 15 years, so I know how to use them. You'll see that there's not much graphical help, and the compressor, stereo, use the drums preset there. I will be altering this. So I'll probably co copy those across to all of those drums. Copy channel strip, paste. We've also got a plate reverb drum booth.
So let's check and compare that. It should be slightly more snappy sounding now. And we've got to have a look at the kick compression as well. This is where I mentioned before, there's a lot of bottom in there. Symbols are probably okay. Let me make that room come to life. Great. Let's have a listen to that together then. So you'll see I've put the plate on most of the drums except for the kick, kept the kick nice and tight. And if you think that the kick drum mic often is inside the kick drum, so it wouldn't pick up much of the room anyway. So uh, I'm basically going to start with the hi-hat processing there and apply that to the shakers. panning it so the hi-hat is here so I'm going to pan it there so there's two bright things kind of playing against each other. I really don't like the sound of this uh, rim here, so I just wonder if I can cheat it by pitching it up a bit. So I've just copied that uh, instance of uh, contacts with snare settings, and I'm just going to have a look at the tuning of that. Copy this shaker setting from here and listen to our, this is our, my thermos flask which I'm using as a tabla.
take the hi-hat channel and copy that into this. more cabassery shakery things here so again just going to copy across Nice, let's just have check this final bit here. And what I'm gonna try and do is kind of crush this together into its own amorphous mass. Does that make any sense whatsoever? Probably not. Let's have a look at the band. Let's first start with these Wurlitzers. Maximizing the kind of anger in us drawing a little bit of fatness out there and just reducing uh, one of its slightly less uh, nice frequencies. Uh, I've got a wah wah version. Let's copy those across and let's have a listen. There's that very angry uh, frequency in there. So this is an example where it just doesn't sound like it's even anywhere near the same room as the Wurlitzer. So.
Guy, Chris H, uh, thanks again for sending this in during the Twitch session. Absolutely fantastic. So let's bring these into the mix, these amazing guitars. So it's sounding very midi at the moment, but we do have these marvellous basses that were sent in. Thanks again to the gentleman who sent that in. That's quite a tricky one, that. Uh, let's just get us some clean... Let's have a listen to... It's kind of sounding like a band. Let's start adding in these other elements here. This is just one I'm going to play around with instead of processing stuff too much and play around with just really panning stuff up um, to kind of give it its own space. So we've currently got a bunch of peel guitars. What we do is just chop a bit of bottom off there. No, no need to use my fancy waves for this. Lot of bottom on that. Get rid of all of that. Just the very bottom.
needs a bit of work doing to it. these panned off um, I just want uh, that to be more stereo Okay, these are tricky ones. Um, very noisy. It's great. It's kind of retro. But what I'm going to try and do is maybe put a little bit of a, a noise gate on there. So let's take the dynamics. compress it to the gate now I don't want it to completely cut it off I just want to try and reduce that amount of hum there so
So that's two stems done. Uh, my t ears are a little bit tired now, so I'm gonna take a break. And they do actually recommend you do that to give your ears uh, a rest just for health reasons, as well as just to uh, you know come back with fresh ears. So that's part one done. I'll come back and have a look at the orchestra and then we'll try and sculpt the whole thing together. Right, that's better. Before kind of tiring my ears out again by playing the drums and the band, I'm just gonna dive straight in to the orchestra. My main concern is that it, it I, I want that upfront sound and a degree of epic, but it just not to sound too washy. So let's just ha have a listen to the top. Okay, so this is something an oversight on my part is I've got this bass stuff, the, the sampled bass stuff uh, that I didn't put into the band. So I'll whack that into the band, but I will come back to it. that pesky automation problem that I've been having with this thing. Oh, there we are. I think I'm going to apply something quite extreme to this, actually. I'm just going to see what it sounds like if I just literally chop everything out. get a bit extreme at the end there that uh, stuff there so let's just maybe just take it down just a snudge okay this is sounding very distant to me okay let's make it all close mics something I want to try doing is a bit of a portamento effect Duplicate. Okay, let's see what this sounds like. So what we need to do is join these up and overlap them. So let's do that again again for the other two bits so copying everything down so people fear splitting them off into different individual sections rules of harmony are that the different counterpoint lines should never cross so that makes life quite easy for us okay and again let's make them as quiet as they can be this will trigger the the portamento the glissando uh, style transition
Get the rosin out from this bass and cello part. Okay, that's good enough for now, I think. Let's just try and merge these extra bass bits into the uh, main band. It's kind of getting there. I do think that what the entire thing is lacking is a proper bass guitar session. Um, so I do think that we're a little bit lost in the bottom end. Um, I think that what I'm going to have another look at is the kick is possibly just shaved off a little bit too much there. If we just take it down a bit, I just think I'm losing a bit of kind of grounding. And then we're losing just some of the key moments. The first bit I think we need to do a bit of automation with is here. This almost needs to be ridiculously loud.
bit of a cop out at the end, so I'm just going to do a quick arrangement thing. Just going to add a bit of sparkle to the orchestral stem, just a little bit of softening. Then let's have a look at what we're doing. I'll get our little suite of plugins up for the master bus. So we're going to have more of the same and an L3 as well. And I'll just have a look at the end rinse section to see what we're doing here. And let's go opto fat. So this is about as much as I can do on this for today. And I guess I've been at it, including prep time, for about three hours. Uh, in a real-world scenario, I'd be ill-advised to spend longer than that on a single queue. Um, I know that the forthcoming queues will get quicker and quicker because you just import all of these different presets, but three hours is probably long enough for one and a half minutes. Very different world to the world of, you know, mixing rock and pop, classical. So probably would afford myself, if I had time, another 15 minutes uh, with fresh ears again, maybe tomorrow, to have a little tweak around. But we didn't get that luxury today, so here it comes. And do let me know what you think of it. Do you think it's too compressed, too smashed to bits, not compressed enough? Do you think it's too toppy, too midi? Um, and I've linked below WAVs to both versions. Quite interesting, after spending three hours listening to this, to then listen to the previous version, I feel that we have come on just a little bit. Anyway, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do. More puppies coming up, puppy bribes. Ding that bell if you want to be notified the next time we put a video up. And one of these for her.